FIA versus IUL. What are the main differences? What are their similarities? What are their strengths? I'm going to break that down in today's video. So a lot of people are forming opinions about indexing and you can use indexing in two different types of vehicles. You can use it inside of life insurance and annuities and they're not the same thing. I want to break that down for people. So a lot of people are confused because they're going, okay, is, is IUL good or is it bad? Are annuities good or are they bad? Do I want indexing? Do I want whole life? Do I want a fixed rate? It's, it can be really confusing for people. And so what I want to do today is talk about what indexing is, what it looks like inside of those two different products, where they're similar and where they're very different. And so let's start with the annuity because I think it's probably the simplest. An index annuity is going to do something that's kind of unique. What it's going to do is it's going to protect your principal and it's going to get interest based on the underlying performance of the index you choose. So for example, you can participate in, if just say the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, up to a cap or as a participation rate. So you get to select your index crediting choice. And they're gonna look at that index over 12 months. They're gonna look at the percentage of change. If it goes up, they'll credit you the index credits based on your cap or participation rate you selected. And if it goes down, they're gonna protect your principal and you won't lose any of that money. That's really at its core what indexing is. So for example, if you have a 10% cap on the S&P 500, the S&P 500 goes up 10% in your 12 months, you get a 10% credit. Now that credit's locked in and part of your principal and interest that can never go down if the market comes back down in the next segment. And that's now part of your locked in amount that you're using to build from from there. Now, a participation rate is very similar. Let's say you have a 75% participation rate. So the market goes up 10%. You would participate in 75% of that, you would get 7.5% and so on. If the market, if you had a 10% cap and the market went up 20, you would get 10, right? If, the, if you had a participation rate and the market went up 20, uh, you would get 15 So at 75%. So, you know, there's different crediting uh, methods and there's different, you know, kind of strategy in a sense to try to pick different crediting methods to try to maximize your indexing, right? That's really a, what it does, but it's going to protect your principal and it's going to have that indexing. Now, an index annuity by itself with no other riders or bonuses or other features is generally not going to have a fee. Okay. So for, for, and I say generally because most of the time they don't, you can just get them with no annual fee. Now that doesn't mean they won't have surrender charges, meaning that if you cash the whole annuity in within a certain time frame that you agree to, you know, whether that's five, 10 or 15 years, there could be penalties if you cash the whole thing in. What I'm talking about is there's not a annual fee that you're going to incur every single year unless you want to select a feature. Some people want a bonus. Okay. So today bonuses are very high. You can get bonuses anywhere between, you know, 10 and over 20%. If you elect a bonus, you can pay a fee and get a, an extra bonus. Now that bonus is going to go in on top of the annuity right away so that when you get your indexing, it's compounding on that bonus. That's really helpful for some people. The bonus is also helpful for people who are in an index annuity from a low interest rate environment who want to change to an index annuity with caps and participation rates that are from this interest rate environment. So that bonus can offset old trader charges to help with that in some cases where that's suitable. That's what the bonus is for. Now you can also attach riders to the index annuity and you can attach things like what's called a guaranteed lifetime withdrawal benefit rider. That is basically what we call an income rider and that is going to give you a lifetime income stream that will pay you every single month or year. Even if the annuity runs out of money, you're still going to get that payment from the company and you can pay a fee to get that rider added on. You can also pay a fee to get a death benefit rider. You can also pay a fee to get a enhanced withdrawal rider for certain qualifying care events. So you can add fees for benefits if you want to, but what's really important to understand about the index annuity and where it's very different from the IUL is, it's not going to inherently come with excess charges. So when you have zeros, they're actually just zeros. You're not actually going backwards because of fees. Now, again, some index annuities have different indexing crediting methods that may be, you know, a little bit more, um, I guess you would call them advanced or potentially beneficial where you could even make more or they'll bonus the indexing. Those can come with fees. So you just got to make sure you understand, hey, do I want a, a, just a straight index annuity with no fees? Do I want to pay a fee to get some type of added benefit? But that's where you get a lot of control in that. And then you have that guaranteed lifetime withdrawal benefit rider you can add on so that when you go to take your income, you know that's what you're going to get. So you can say, hey, you know what? I want to pay a fee. I want to get a 7% roll up. That's not an interest rate. That's a roll up, meaning that they're going to say, okay, we'll take this annuity. Regardless of how the indexing does, 
we're going to credit a 7% roll up to a benefit base. Now that's not your money, that's not your account value, that's not interest. That is a crediting method they use to determine how much they're gonna pay you for lifetime income. Very similar to the way social security rolls up. So for example, if you're gonna wait for, on your social security benefit from 65 to 67, that benefit is gonna increase those two years that, which is gonna increase your payout. That's exactly how this annuity works, right? It's not cash you can take or like interest you take off the top. It's a payment that's going to be from the company that they're going to guarantee for the rest of your life. So you can basically say, hey, you know what? If I'm gonna retire in 10 years, I get a 7% roll up. I can see the benefit base go to here, which is gonna project this income from the company. And they can give you that in what's called an illustration. And they have a, you know, basically right in there, a guarantee showing you what that income's going to be. So you can create a really good amount of predictable income that you know what you're gonna get with an index annuity. That's really, in my view, where it shines and where it does really, really well. You know, I don't do a ton of index annuities just for the indexing. Typically, I like the benefits, the income, something that it can provide because that's where it really, really shines very, very well. Now, let's go to the IUL, right? Is IUL uh, drastically different? IUL has very similar indexing you know, potential. Uh, generally, you're gonna see higher caps with life insurance than you will with annuities. So you're gonna see you know, better potential indexing. On the flip side, you're also gonna have other costs and charges that come with the life insurance. So the life insurance is going to have uh, cost of insurance charges. It's gonna have potentially premium loads. It's gonna have administrative expenses. There's gonna be all kinds of little you know, policy charges and fees, things that are built into the IUL that you're gonna pay every single month. And so that can be kind of tough because you know where people mix these two products up is when you put money into an annuity, all your money goes into work for you. And if you have a couple years of zeros, all your money is still sitting there. When you have an IUL, not all your money goes in right away because there's premium loads or charges up front. And then typically it takes a, quite a while to build back uh, in an IUL before you get back to even just where your principal was. Uh, sometimes it's faster, but generally it's gonna be you know anywhere from like five to 10 years maybe, depending on the structure and design. Again, now the big moving part with an IUL is there's a death benefit. And that death benefit is a tax-free death benefit. And the relationship with that death benefit to your cash value is gonna determine your fees. That's also gonna determine how well your policy cash value is going to accumulate, how well you're gonna get back to break even, and then how well you're gonna be able to um, you know, use that cash value. Now, one thing that I wanna point out is when you take money from the annuity, it's going to build tax deferred, and then it's gonna be taxed as your gains first. So basically when you pull money out, any gains you've gotten along the way, you're gonna pay tax on those gains first before you get to your principal. Life insurance has the ability to go to your basis first, your principal first, and then incur gains later. So they get taxed differently. And if you take participating loans correctly from a life insurance policy, those can also be tax-free because they're loans instead of withdrawals. Now, if you take withdrawals from the life insurance policy, it's gonna be taxed like the annuity. You're gonna pay tax on the gains. So again, it can get kind of complex with the different ways you can get taxed on these things. But what's what I try to break it down to make it easy is, annuity is gonna be tax deferred, and then you're gonna be taxed on the gains first before you get to your principal with withdrawals. There are no loans from annuities. With life insurance, there's a tax-free death benefit. There's also tax-free riders that can be accelerated through like a chronic care rider or terminal illness or critical illness rider, or even a long-term care rider where it's gonna pay you for certain qualifying events. Those will also come out tax-free. Participating loans done correctly without the policy lapsing will be tax-free distributions back to yourself. But withdrawals at any time or surrenders are going to be where you, just like the annuity where you're gonna pay tax on all, on all your gains. So that's kind of one way to break it, break it down. Now, people like the IUL because the higher caps and they illustrate really, really well. Now, where I think these two are very different is if, if you look at the two illustrations and you look at the guaranteed versus the assumption, that's where you're gonna see these two really stand out. The annuity is gonna have a much stronger guarantee than the life insurance. The uh, assumed rate on the life insurance is probably gonna be much better than on the annuity. So again, that's where you kinda gotta look at it. That's why I typically lean more towards index annuities for retirement because I like to have that certainty. I don't want something that looks good on an illustration that isn't gonna actually play out. And that's where IUL can be disappointing for some people sometimes. Now, there's a ton of different ways to use IUL. And I, I think I have a lot of content on this already where if you're max funding it for retirement income, I really believe that's a big mistake and I wouldn't do that. Um, where I use IUL is for the benefits. So I like to say, okay, you know what? Hey, is there a good way we can get a, a really great death benefit or a care benefit with this IUL? And can we preserve that indexing? Can we put a couple of riders on there, maybe like a return of premium or waiver of surrender to make sure we can access all that cash value back if we need it? 
So there's some parameters I put on my IULs, but I'm just trying to break down the difference right now. They both offer indexing, but very dr drastic uh, ways they're able to provide money if you want to use it from the policy and the taxation of both is very different. The fee structure is very different. So, you know, if you're looking for retirement income, for me, it would be really more appropriate to use an annuity. That's what an annuity does. It's, it's providing income for your retirement. If you're looking to accomplish tax-free benefits or be able to remove certain key retirement risks with those benefits, then an IUL is going to have a lot of strengths that the annuity just doesn't have, and that's really where it shines. So that's hopefully a great way to kind of break down a simple framework to start to determine the difference between the two. And if you're online shopping and some agent showing you like IUL for retirement income planning, ask them to see an index annuity comparison and, and you know just see what the two look like so you can really get some education on that and start to learn what the differences are before you make a big decision on that. You know What I'm really concerned about, one of the main reasons I'm on YouTube is I'm seeing a lot of people just funneling money into life insurance for retirement income. And I think that it's going to take a long time for them to realize that that was probably a mistake. And they're putting like way too much concentration into like one type of life insurance policy. <laughs> and I think that that can be, you know, a big mistake for a lot of people. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm providing good content where you can understand the differences and learn, hey, you know what? I don't want to take that much risk in my retirement and bet on one thing. I think there might be other options. And that's where you might want to consider annuity. On the flip side, when you get into retirement, you know, the IUL and the life insurance products have great ways to create that leverage to build in those benefits to make sure that you're going to be cared for and you can remove those key risks. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like content like this, check out this other video right here where I break down the frameworks of where you can use each type of life insurance.